anxiety coming from a feeling of incompetence. This is what I feel while writing this script. The thoughts in my head right now are trying to convince me I'm not qualified or skilled enough to talk about this topic. So as I'm not able to cover it as it should be covered, my mind is telling me it's probably best not to even try making a video like this. The feelings I'm having are often associated with imposter feelings, or the imposter syndrome, or phenomenon. This is a mental state where we doubt our skills, talents and accomplishments, and we are constantly worried we're going to end up exposed for what we truly think we are, which is a fraud or a trickster. For example, I remember a situation where a pretty strict professor at college, you can imagine him as a tempered version of Flesher from Whiplash, well, he complimented me and told me I was very well read when I answered one of his questions in class. And this left me surprised, but not because of his sudden personality shift, but the fact that I never could have imagined I had it in me to fool a person who was usually very opinionated and critical of others. And instead of potentially feeling positive or neutral in that moment, I was actually questioning the sanity of that professor. While this event seems pretty mild, these initial tiny sparks of feelings, if left unchecked, can grow so much that they eventually take control, stopping us in our tracks. They may make us inert and unable to continue or even start with any of our projects or ideas as we are under constant scrutiny from our own selves of not being good enough and so much so that in the end we can end up believing that whatever we strive for isn't worth trying as we are not skilled enough to accomplish it. To give a personal example, this was also one of the reasons I don't have a master's degree. I passed all my exams, got all the needed ECTS points, but when it came to writing my MA thesis, I highly doubted my ability to write it, to the point I was almost sure I was unable to do it. This self-doubt coupled with constant anxiety was persistent, and I ended up procrastinating quite a lot. Time was passing, the submissions I was handing in to my mentor were written at the last minute, and pretty poorly of course, and I really wasn't happy with them, which in turn strengthened the idea of my incompetence, and it turned out to be a self-fulfilling prophecy in the end. The final deadline was up, with me of course not having finished my thesis and ultimately being unable to graduate. And that turn of events made me realize, though many months later, that I was having a problem and I needed to do something about it. And while I'm still dealing with demeaning thoughts and some level of insecurity when it comes to any of my work, the strength of that destructive part of my mind is greatly reduced. So in the remainder of this video, I'll talk about the methods I used and still do to reduce the feelings of angst and doubt when it comes to my own skills and abilities. Also, I'd like to point out that these are my own experiences and not a substitution for therapy and should not be viewed as such. So please, if you need it, do find a mental health professional in your area and seek counseling. So after identifying the issue I was having, getting to know it better was the first step. We usually fear the unknown, so making the unknown more known can have a positive impact on that initial fear impulse. And this is why I started to gather information about self-doubt or imposter feelings and learn about its causes, its possible effects and which methods to use in order to peacefully coexist with it, as you cannot really get rid of it completely. One of these methods is logical questioning. For example, since I doubt my ability to make this video, I can ask myself, can I edit lengthy videos? Yes. Can I write a longer script? Of course. Can I make videos on things I haven't done before? That's also affirmative. And finally, can I write about my personal issues? The answer to that question is that I don't know, but I will surely continue not knowing if I don't even dare to try. So with these questions, I've established that I do have the basic skill set to make a video like this, and also given myself a bit of motivation to try and do it. The next strategy is seeing the issue from a different angle. So if we take a look at Eastern philosophies, we'll see that Buddhism, for example, talks about something known as the monkey mind. This phrase essentially means an unsettled or a restless mind where we can't control unwanted thoughts and emotions. The imposter feelings, of course, fall under this exact category. And if you've seen any of the videos where Buddhist monks discuss this term, it's usually in a playful manner, almost acknowledging how mischievous this mind can be. So sometimes when I get these feelings, instead of focusing on the anxiety and self-doubt, I tell myself something like, oh look, it's the monkey mind again. And I imagine a cartoony monkey dancing and blabbering in my head. This helps the attitude change from seriousness to seeing that what I'm dealing with is more like a cute frolicking animal than anything more threatening. And of course, I'd like this attitude to continue. So figuring out how to keep it for longer periods is the next step. So in addition to acknowledging the monkey mind, I like to borrow more methods from Eastern philosophies, such as meditating and other relaxation techniques like breathing exercises and mindfulness. I found that breathing exercises help with dealing with the issue momentarily, while meditation and mindfulness work more subtly and calm the mind over the long term, if practiced regularly. I also find consolation in the fact that there are many people out there who are struggling with the same thing. It seems that as many as 82% of us have to deal with these feelings sometime in our life. The key realization here is that I'm not alone. It turns out that these types of thoughts are pretty common. 
Also, they don't discriminate as they affect almost all age groups. And knowing I'm not an isolated self-torturing freak while the rest of humanity is continuing to merely go about their daily business can be liberating. Which brings me to the next strategy. When you realize many struggle with the same thing as you do, it becomes easier to talk about it. Either to a friend, a caring family member, someone trusted at work, or even through a YouTube video like this. Of course, opening up always comes with a risk, but I found that people who truly care about you will almost always try to help, give useful advice, or just quietly listen instead of dissing you or calling you a loser. Also, sharing sensitive information and having conversations where we allow ourselves to be vulnerable with a chosen few can actually deepen and strengthen our relationships with these people. Next, there is the realization that none of us are born with inherent knowledge. We don't come into this world with a PhD in medicine or masters in arts. We don't know how to code when we first open our eyes, or how to even edit a simple video. Instead, there are paths we need to take to learn these things. Some areas of human activity require official degrees to enable us to do specific jobs, but others don't, a meaning that we can even be self-taught and sometimes we must learn as we go, like what I'm trying to do with this video. Having that in mind, there's also the option to use imposter syndrome as a strong inner motivator for things that are objectively achievable. So instead of running away from a doable task because our silly monkey mind is telling us to do so, we can use this impulse as a signal to do the exact opposite. So instead of listening to my brain telling me not to make this video, I'm planning to do the exact opposite. And if you're watching, that means it worked this time. And then, when we've actually done what a part of us thought impossible, we can reward ourselves for our efforts by acknowledging and enjoying the feelings of release, satisfaction and contentment when the work is done. Now, I'd also like to mention that there are other, let's call them less enlightened methods that I use. One of them is dismissal, and in a way that's not exactly polite. When feelings of inadequacy arise, sometimes I'll simply tell them Why don't you go outside and play hide and go fuck yourself? And this can really strengthen your morale when you allow yourself to blow off steam a bit. Then there is comparison with others. Comparing my perceived failures with other people's actions I consider to be worse can really take a load off my back. For example, I often remember a story of a guy who read online that lemon juice makes you invisible. And with that newfound knowledge, he covered himself with the juice and went in to rob a bank. Of course, he was caught very quickly, but he couldn't get his mind around how they managed to do it, as he was convinced he was invisible the whole time. So when comparing myself to the lemon guy, I tend to get the feeling that my mishaps are really not that bad. And having in mind that there are tons of people out there who have it way worse, either by their own fault or not, really settles down the impact imposter feelings can have on me, and can also shift my focus to more positive emotions, like empathy. And one final remark. It is easy for me to act all high and mighty and list various methods and strategies that are effective in dealing with the issues we face in our lives. Gaining knowledge or reading again and again that mental and physical health usually get better when we get enough sleep, eat right and exercise is also an easy thing to do. The challenge comes with putting what we know into action, and not just temporarily, but being persistent enough so that these strategies turn into habits. I believe the key to slowly making progress in matters like these comes down to internal motivation. This is individual. For example, as time goes by, I'm more and more conscious of the fact that my life is fragile, and as a human being, very limited. So with that knowledge, being present in the moment, learning from and trying to appreciate any situation I find myself in, really becomes imperative, and over time has a greater chance of making life more bearable, and even enjoyable, not only for me, but also the people I share it with.